Welcome. In this session in linear data analysis, we'll explore three examples of diagonalizable matrices. Let's first consider a two by two example. So we'll call this matrix A1, and suppose that its first column is 1, 1, and its second column is 4, minus 2. And when we work through the eigenvalues, so one way that we could do this is we could say to take the determinant of a1 minus lambda times the identity, and we would get a quadratic equation. And when we do that, we find that the first eigenvalue is minus 3, and that the second eigenvalue is plus 2. And these eigenvalues are distinct. And one of the results of our previous session was that eigenvalues being distinct was a sufficient condition for the matrix to be diagonalizable. And that is, we now expect that the eigenvectors will be a basis. How do we find these? Um, so to, to find um, eigenvector j, we could do a number of things. We could, uh, for example, um, use the RREF to find the null space of A minus lambda J I. And this is not a recommended way, but it's certainly a way that you could do it using some of the prerequisite understanding that you have in linear algebra. And this is a very useful equation. What we would do is we would do this twice. We would do this once for lambda 1, which is, so we would say, a plus 3 times the identity. And then we would do it again for a minus 2 times the identity. And when we do that, so we could do that, or um, one way I would recommend that you try this is use the i function in that map. And when you use the eig function, it will, there's a way to call it uh, with, um, it will return two distinct um, arguments. And those return arguments are the eigenvalues and the eigenvectors. It's worth, uh, it's worth reading the, um, the documentation on the eig function. It's a, it can be one of your friends. So when we do this, what we find is that eigenvector 1, so MATLAB will report this as being, and you'll, you'll see that it will be minus 1 over the square root of 2 and plus 1 over the square root of 2. So MATLAB will give you a, um, a numerical approximation. If you use the null space, you can find this simply. Um, but we could also write that v1, and I'll use from mathematics, the proportionality symbol. So that's not an alpha, although in my case it sort of looks like it. Um, it's proportional to minus 1, 1. And this is because an eigenvector is just one example. The standard way to represent an eigenvector is as a vector that has a unit norm. Um, we, for our purposes, for human readable purposes, sometimes it's better if we can make it into something such as this. So I could multiply v1 by any value, what's any scalar value, and I would still get a times v1 equals lambda times v1. And similarly, if we go through um, if we go through v2, what we'll find is it will give us something that is involving more square roots, and that would be proportional to 4, 1. And so what we could do if we wanted to is when we have these eigenvectors, we could then form, uh, we'd prefer to put them into this unit uh, form. So uh, I would have to divide these by the square root of 17 and so on. Um, what we could do is we could actually find the matrix E that transforms A into the diagonal matrix where the first entry is minus 3 and the second entry is plus 2. Let's try another example. So this one was, was a, an asymmetric matrix. It's not symmetric. Let's try a matrix that 
has a different structure, suppose that it's a triang triangular matrix. So suppose that it's 1, 0, and 4, minus 2. And you can see all I've done is I've taken this matrix and I've annihilated that entry. And what I find when I do the calculations is that now lambda 1 equals minus 2 and lambda 2 equals plus 1. So when I make a change of one entry in this matrix, I've changed both of the eigenvalues. Again, the eigenvalues are distinct, so the eigenvectors are a basis, and the eigenvector basis for this matrix is V1 is proportional to minus 4, 3, and V2 is any vector that is a scalar multiple of 1, 0. So that is, that's relatively straightforward. Now, let's suppose that we have a 3 by 3. And for a 3 by 3, now finding the eigenvalues and the eigenvectors is more than a small chore. When, let's suppose that A3 is this matrix. So suppose that it's 4, minus 1, 2, 0, 5, 0, minus 3, minus 3, 11. And I constructed this matrix carefully so that what we have is that eigenvalue 1 equals eigenvalue 2 equals 5, I'll omit the plus sign, and eigenvalue 3 equals 10. So here, our sufficient condition is not met. That is, we don't have three distinct eigenvalues. We have a repeated eigenvalue. And if you want to pursue this material further, what you'll discover is that we'll say that this matrix has an algebraic multiplicity of 2. That is, there is at least one set of eigenvalues, a pair, that, that's what multiplicity 2 means, there's at least two eigenvalues that are the same. So although the sufficient condition is met, this, um, this matrix does have an eigenvector basis. And when I do the calculations, I find that V1 is any multiple of 0, 1, 0. That V2 is any multiple of minus 3, 0, 1. And that V3 is any multiple of 1, 1, minus 2. And if we examine these eigenvectors, we don't see any pattern between the eigenvectors and the matrix. That this is saying that these eigenvectors are deeply embedded in this matrix. Um, deeply, they are deep inside this matrix. And one of the things that I do when I'm facing um, a matrix that at least is relatively small is I like to find out what are the eigenvalues and what are the eigenvectors. Because when I know that, it tells me a lot about the matrix.